Honorable Speaker, I present the interim budget for 24-25. The Indian economy has witnessed profound positive transformation in the last 10 years. The people of India are looking ahead to the future with hope and optimism. With the blessings of the people, when our government under the visionary and dynamic leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi assumed office in 2014, the country was facing enormous challenges. With Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas as its mantra, the government overcame those challenges in right earnest. Structural reforms were undertaken. Pro-people programs were formulated and implemented promptly. Conditions were created for more opportunities for employment and entrepreneurship. The economy got a new vigor. The fruits of development started reaching the people at scale. The country got a new sense of purpose and hope. Naturally, the people blessed the government with a bigger mandate. In the second term, our government under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister doubled down on its responsibilities to build a prosperous country with comprehensive development of all people and all regions. Our government strengthened its mantra to Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas and Sapka Vishwas. Our development philosophy covered all elements of inclusivity, namely social inclusivity through coverage of all strata of the society and geographical in inclusivity through development of all regions of the country. With the whole of nation approach of Sapka Prayas, the country overcame the challenges of once in a century pandemic took long strides towards Atmanirbhar Bharat, committed to Panch Pran, and laid solid foundations for the Amritkal. As a result, as a result, our young country has high aspirations, pride in its present, and hope and confidence for a bright future. We expect that our government, based on its stupendous work, will be blessed again by the people with a resounding mandate. Inclusive development and growth. Our humane and inclusive approach to development is a marked and deliberate departure from the earlier approach of provisioning up to village level. Development programs were thus provisioned. In the last 10 years, however, have targeted each and every household and individual through housing for all, har ghar jal, electricity for all, cooking gas for all, bank accounts and financial services for all in record time. The worries about food, the worries about food have been eliminated through free ration for 80 crore people. Minimum support, minimum support prices for the produce of Annadatta are periodically increased appropriately. These and the, base, and the provision of basic necessities have enhanced real income in the rural areas. Their economic needs could be addressed, thus spurring growth and generating jobs. Social justice. Our government is working with an approach to development that is all-round, all-pervasive, and all-inclusive. Sarvangin, Sarvasparsi, or Sarvasamaveshi. It covers all castes and people at all levels. We are working to make India a Vikasit Bharat by 2047. For achieving that goal, we need to improve people's capability and empower them. Previously, social justice 
was mostly a political slogan. For our government, social justice is an effective and necessary governance model. The saturation, the saturation approach of covering all eligible people is the true and comprehensive achievement of social justice. This is secularism in action, reduces corruption, and prevents nepotism, prevents by Bhatijawad. There is transparency and assurance that benefits are delivered to all eligible people. The resources are distributed fairly. All, regardless of their social standing, get access to opportunities. We are addressing systemic inequalities that had plagued our society. We focus on outcomes and not on outlays so that the social economic transformation is achieved. As our Prime Minister firmly believes, we need to focus on four major castes. They are Garib, Mahilaye, Yuva, and Annadatha. Their needs, their aspirations, and their welfare are our highest priority. The country progresses when they progress. All four require and receive government support in their quest to better their lives. Their empowerment and well-being will drive the country forward. Garib Kalyan, Desh Ka Kalyan. We believe in empowering the poor. The earlier approach of tackling poverty through entitlements had resulted in very modest outcomes. When the poor became empowered partners in the development process, government's power to assist them also increases manifold. With the pursuit of Sabka Saat, in these 10 years, the government has assisted 25 crore people to get freedom from multi-dimensional poverty. Our government's efforts are now getting synergized with energy and passion of such empowered people. This is truly elevating them from poverty. Direct benefit transfer of 34 lakh crore rupees from the government using PM Jandan accounts has led to savings of 2.7 lakh crores of rupees for the government. This savings has been realized through avoidance of leakages prevalent earlier. The savings have helped in providing more funds for Garib Kalyan. PM Swanidhi has provided credit assistance to 78 lakh street vendors. From that total, from that total of 78 lakh street vendors, 2.3 lakh have received credit for the third time. PM Janman Yojana reaches out to the particularly vulnerable tribal groups who have remained outside the realm of development so far. PM Vishwakarma Yojana provides end-to-end -end support to artisans and craftspeople engaged in 18 trades. The schemes for empowerment of divyangs and transgender persons reflect firm resolve of our government to leave no one behind. Welfare of Annadatta. Farmers are our Annadatta. Every year under PM Kisan Samman Yojana, direct financial assistance is provided to 11.8 crore farmers, including marginal and small farmers. Crop insurance is given to 4 crore farmers under PM Fasal Bhima Yojana. These, besides several other programs, are assisting Annadatta in producing food for the country and for the world. Electronic National Agricultural Market has integrated 1,361 mandis 
and is providing services to 1.8 crore farmers with trading volume of 3 lakh crores of rupees. The sector is poised for inclusive, balanced, higher growth and productivity. These are facilitated from farmer-centric policies, income support, coverage of risks through price and insurance support, promotion of technologies and innovations through startups. Empowering the Amrit PD, the Yuva, our prosperity depends on adequately equipping and empowering the youth. The National Education Policy 2020 is ushering the transformational reforms. PM Schools for Rising India, PM Shri, are delivering quality teaching and nurturing holistic and well-rounded individuals. The Skill India Mission has trained 1.4 crore youth, upskilled and reskilled 54 lakh youth, and established 3,000 new ITIs. A large number of institutions of higher learning, namely seven IITs, 16 triple ITs, seven IAMs, 15 AIMS, and 390 universities have been set up. PM Mudra Yojana has sanctioned 43 crore loans aggregating to 22.5 lakh crores of rupees for entrepreneurial aspirations of our youth. Besides that, Fund of Funds, Startup India, and Startup Credit Guarantee schemes are assisting our youth. They are also becoming Rozgar Data. The country is proud of our youth scaling new heights in sports. The highest ever medal tally in Asian Games and Asian Para Games in 2023 reflects a high confidence level. Chess prod prodigy and our number one ranked player Pragnananda put up a stiff fight against the reigning world champion Magnus Carlsen in 2023. Today, India has over 80 chess grandmasters compared to little over 20 in 2010. Momentum for Nari Shakti, the empowerment of women through entrepreneurship, ease of living and dignity for them has gained momentum in these 10 years. 30 crore mudra yojana loans have been given to women entrepreneurs. Female enrollment in higher education has gone up by 28% in 10 years. In STEM courses, girls and women constitute 43% of enrollment, one of the highest in the world. All these measures are getting reflected in the increasing participation of women in workforce. Making triple talaq illegal, reservation of one-third seats for women in the Lok Sabha and state assemblies, and giving over 70% houses under PM Awaz Yojana in rural areas to women, and giving over 70% houses under PM Awaz Yojana in rural areas to women as sole or joint owners have enhanced their dignity. Exemplary track record of governance, development, and performance. Besides delivering on high growth in terms of gross domestic product, the government is equally focused on a more comprehensive GDP, that is, governance, development, and performance. Our government has provided transparent, accountable, people-centric and prompt trust-based administration with citizen-first and minimum government, maximum governance approach. 
the impact of all round development is discernible in all sectors there is macroeconomic stability including in the external sector investments are robust the economy is doing well people are living better and earning better with greater even greater aspirations for future average real income of the people has increased by 50% inflation is moderate people are getting empowered equipped and enabled to pursue their aspirations there is effective and timely delivery of programs and of large projects economic management the multi pronged economic management over the past 10 years has complemented people centric inclusive development following are some of the major elements one all forms of infrastructure physical digital or social are being built in record time 